<clears throat> Hello, I'm Martha Rosa, so I'm going to be interviewing Jesse Vega. Hi, hi everybody. And he is an entertainer. We're going to be discussing his life as an entertainer as well as his sexuality. So, Jesse. Hi, Martha. It's always good to see you. The weather is crazy out there. <laughs> it is, it is. I'm like this. But um, I do have a few questions for you. I would like to dig a little deeper into, you know, your career, mm -hmm. your passion, you know, your sexuality and everything. Okay. So, um, first I would like to know, um, what, what would you consider yourself? You know, how would you label or not label because, you know, I know. Right, right. Labels. Um, but what would you consider yourself? Who are you? Who is Jesse Vega? Okay. Well, Jesse Vega is basically, um, a 25-year-old Bronx individual who lives in the urban Bronx area who loves to perform anything that has to do with um, anything with the arts, like acting, dancing, singing, anywhere from pop music to hip-hop to R&B, just anything that I love to do with the arts. And um, I am a person who loves to have sexual relationships with men. So I would say that that's basically one of my top things that I, I love to do. And, and what, I'm, what am I as a person? Um, I know growing up, I used to tell a lot of people because I was so scared to tell um, certain classmates of who I was because I was trying to get involved into my own. And I wasn't too comfortable with saying, oh, if I was gay or if I was shy. I went through those certain phases. But now I've learned to like not believe in certain labels because once we're born in this world, we're just who we are. You know, I'm Jesse, I'm a human being. Um, and I just love to have sexual relationships with men. So, um, at what, how early did you know that, did you experience these sexual feelings for men or just in general, how did you, how early did you know of your sexuality? I want to say it started very, very early because I always saw a lot of people, oh, I came out the class when I was 15. Mm -hmm. Oh, I kissed the boy when I was 15, 16. But not necessarily, you know, especially in the Latin community. Mm -hmm. We're so, um, how I put it, we're all, we're all like family type of people where it's like we're all accepted in this world to be, uh, who you want to be and not judge you and not a lot of people can ha can say that because everything is so strict mm -hmm. and certain things you can't say certain things you cannot say because of the the laws of how you were raised as, a, as an individual so um I started off when I was approximately like five years old five years old mm -hmm. for uh, when I started to have um, um more like I was into guys, mm -hmm. and I used to like fascinate about them. So have the crushes, and right? I had certain crushes, and and I knew what I what I liked, but I was afraid to even let it out because you know I didn't who I was. I didn't know I was young, so it started very early in my adolescent years. That's that's very interesting. Actually. Um, a lot of times I hear people say younger. Um, around 11 or something, mm -hmm. but that's interesting that you say around 4 or 5. That right, it, yeah, around 4 or 5, because from that time, when I was around those ages, um, I even though I had my first kiss, even though I was like 15, but I didn't really have my, my first kiss till I was like 6 years old. Oh, wow. So I remember when I was like 6, and I, I was just... I was like a horny little person, yeah. even though I, <laughs> even though I just didn't necessarily know that. Right. But I guess I was so into like exploring, mm -hmm. where I was like in elementary in the in kindergarten, like making out with one one boy, mm -hmm. and like hiding in the in the bathroom right. and not realizing what I was doing, but mm -hmm. it was a thrill. Mm -hmm. And I kept that with myself because mm -hmm. I was afraid to come out, and right. I didn't know who I was. So I, there was there was like no right or wrong. I right. just did it because I explored. And so I got older, then I started to realize what's gay, mm -hmm. what's straight, what's bi, what's lesbian, what's... And then I came into my own by that age, I was like, I'm tired, I think I'm comfortable with that I am that. Right. 
So um, coming up as a child and, you know, in school and everything, how was that for you? How was that experience for you as an individual? Um, did you have any negative experiences or positive experiences? It was hard. It was very hard, especially in junior high school. But it didn't start until I guess when I graduated from fifth grade into junior high school because I was not the average T type of kid who loved to watch Iron Man and watch Batman and all those uh, Marvel DC comics and love to play cops and robbers where growing up in a Hispanic um, family upbringing where the boys would hang out with the boys and the girls would hang out with the girls. I was more at home mm -hmm. because of my um, medical medical history. And I didn't necessarily experience what was the streets. My mom was very into, because I was a very sick child, always in and out of the hospital, where she just mostly made me stay at home. And I used that, because I wanted to hang out with the boys. I wanted to hang out, because I grew up with a lot of boys, a lot of cousins. And all of them were all macho men, and they were all about the girls. So I wanted to have that. I looked up to them, but I couldn't do it. Right. Because they were all into sports. I couldn't be into sports. Right. So I used that as growing up and watching a lot of TV. Mm -hmm. And then being inspired by like Oprah Winfrey and, and all the acting. And a lot of movies like Jim Carrey, Ruby Goldberg. And a lot of things that I saw in movies where I just used that to like my remedy to not worry about that. So growing up, I always became a kid who was always um, full of life. Always entertaining. And it was very hard because a lot of people would misjudge me. Because mm. they was like, oh, you know, why are you like this? He loves to sing and dance. He loves to mm. do this. You know, and you're always hanging out with a girl. So are you gay? That's kind of gay. That's homo. So it was very hard in junior high school where I didn't really know where I fit in. Because there were so many cliques. Right. And there is always, you know, people passing that judgment. And, you know, um, so when they would say things such as, oh, are you that homo? Or that's gay? Like, did you... If that was prior to you coming out, how would you respond? Was it, did they respond negative to you when, you know, they was, was it more like a tease or, I think you know, joking? certain people, I guess they didn't really know what they really were saying and how it affected me, right. knowing that it was, you know, bad, especially picking off certain mm -hmm. people and making fun of them and not right. realizing what you're saying mm -hmm. does hurt, even though you didn't touch me. Absolutely. So... It did affect me, and it was like, you know, always, oh, the faggot, the, the gay one in, in the walk in the hallway, and I, I always wanted to feel like I had a lot of monks friends, right. and I couldn't have that. Right. Not to say I couldn't have it, just no one understood my personality, who I was, and when they would say things like that, I was always like, let it fly by, right. because I never was into altercations, because right. if I did felt like I needed to step up for myself, I was afraid because of my medical history that I was going to get into a very delicate situation where I was going to get uh, in the hospital, right. and that's why I never had any physical fights, I never was, um, I was always bullied, but I never was into um, standing up for myself, that was one of the things that really cut me deep because I felt like I needed to speak up and I couldn't speak up because I was afraid that something else was going to happen. And my mom was very scared of that. Going, letting me go into school and every day the teasing happened, the, the name calling, growing up and always saying, you know, faggot this, faggot that. And it was hard. It was very hard. But I used it as a, a strength. So like, you know what? Let them say whatever they want to say because you know what? I'm here to accomplish one thing and that is to finish school absolutely absolutely um you did mention medical history would you like to share um yeah of course. course why not i mean you'll be the first person so i get to do it <laughs> okay. okay so well, my medical history well what is it that you would like to know as in into my history like what is it like um like, yeah like there's certain different avenues that we could take with this mm -hmm. pens. so i know as you said you do have you do have a medical history mm -hmm. um that has it put like restraints on you doing certain things as far as you know in the entertainment you did you didn't want to get into altercations because of it i do know um knowing you previously right mm -hmm. so you, but you did have a surgery done yes and, um you know how has that affected you and you know just in general you well when i grew up 
Well, actually, I started having, um, I was always a sick child. Let's start off with that. When I was born, um, I had uh, no blood levels, no blood counts. I always had, I was always in and out of the hospital because of, due to um, blood clotting. And the, the, the issues didn't start until I was probably maybe like, maybe nine months old, 10, going into a year where um, I developed, where I, my mom told me the story, if I can remember correctly. My mom said that I developed, uh, I was eating chocolate one time, and this was growing up in the projects. So I was, um, my aunt was living there, visiting, and I was eating a chocolate bar, and all of a sudden, I vomited, and in the vomit, I was bleeding, like blood. blood. She took me into the hospital, Lincoln Hospital, and they found out that I had, they detected a hole in my bile duct, which they had to remove my gallbladder. So what happened was I was bleeding internally without them even, without even me, my mom even knowing. So with that, um, they had to remove my gallbladder because of course you don't really necessarily need a gallbladder. So sometimes they remove it, which I don't know what was that about. But I hope I was bleeding. And what happened was they had to um, in inject um, the veins. Um, inside my the not not in the esophageal range but mostly in the abdomen. So I was having blood clots. So what happened was when I was having the blood clots, I was um, the blood wasn't flowing the right way. Mm -hmm. So that's why I became anemic when I was growing up. I was always like kind of like yellowish pale, and I developed uh, an enlarged spleen throughout the years. So of course a normal person's spleen is like three four centimeters. Mine was nine. Wow. And it ran from here to here. And then at that time, I was a very rare case. So Lincoln Hospital didn't even know what to do with me. They didn't know what was going on, how to fix the situation. So they just kept pick poking and prodding me. And that's, it was a back and forth, back and forth yeah, in the hospital. So very frustrating. So I developed it and it became a huge spleen. And there was no way of controlling it. So in order for it to be controlled, I couldn't get into no contact sports because if I was like, if the ball would have thrown and the ball would have hit me, boom, I would have believed and not know and I could have been passed out there. I couldn't get into fights because one blow, that's it. So I developed like a big stomach because of the spleen. My blood counts were low and I was always in and out of the hospital because I was developing in the esophageal range. Um, various seas, which was like swollen blood, swollen blood vessels in that in the esophageal range, where if they would burst, then I would bleed, wow. and I wouldn't know. So like I could have, I could be doing number two, mm -hmm. and if I see specks of blood or, or dark stool, then I would have to rush to the hospital. Something's wow. not going on. Right. So that's with the medical history, it kind of um, set me back from not. Even though I was like, oh, I want to be with the boys, I want to grow up, I want to real, I want to see what it's like to be with my cousins. I had to use that as entertaining, and I developed a, a gift. Right. With, I started to perform and act and dance, and it, and it was healthy, mm -hmm. and it was something that I, I was born with. It, it was within, and I started developing that when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't something that kind of hold me back, even right. though I suffered it for so many years. My mom was there with me through it all. Uh, but it was like nothing. It became more of like, my medical history became more like uh, my identity. Wow. So who you were. Your identity is who you are. Right. So you think that, you, you said your medical history became more your identity. So, and then you did say that too. Mm -hmm. You started, you know, with the entertaining, the dancing and the this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, do you, and you said around four or five, you knew your sexuality. Right. Right. So, do you think any of that kind of... I mean, I don't think people choose their sexuality. No, they don't choose it. Right. I like, when they say, oh, you're born gay. Right. Every time they say that, I'm like... It's it's always a debate with that kind of time. Right. Because it's like, they say, oh, are you born gay? You're not... You're you're not right. In my opinion, and people... Everybody's going to go and say, I don't know what you're talking about because you was always gay. But I don't necessarily say you were born gay. You right. was born... In this world, as a person, individual, from a blessing from, you can believe whatever you want to believe in the religion or whatever, you, you know. But you're a person who tends to like the same sex. Right. Or you probably would be born, what is it, you might be born with 
liking chairs or worshipping dogs or mm-hmm. worshipping cats or trees or whatever. So I wouldn't say you were born gay. It just so happened it came within. It right. started to become an identity within myself. So even as... Do you think at all if you were able to be that child that could go and play sports and could go and do this, and do you think anything would have been any different? Do you think... Would it be different? Um, as far as just entertainment or whether it be sexuality, entertainment, anything, do you think if you were able to, if you didn't have the I think to? because I was so into doing entertainment and that's mm-hmm. something that I'm passionate about. Right. And if I was growing up and doing things with the boys and another big part that played, it was my mom was a single, a single mother. So she was a mother and father. So that also kind of played a part where I never had the father figure. Right. So if I did maybe have the father figure, my, my father was there, but he was never there, there mm-hmm. in the house. My mom was older. She always had, because my mom is mostly full of women, mm-hmm. so aunts all coming back and forth. Right. There was never male figures in the house, so I always seen women all over me. Um, <laughs> so I think that played a part, right. but I don't think if I would have done sports, it wouldn't change it because I guess sooner or later, I think I would have come within mm-hmm. probably whatever you were. I think it would have been worse, not worse, but it would have been a little bit of a challenge. So like, oh, sure, I'm doing this and trying to be macho and then I'm lying and then I'm trying to go home and get home and be watching Oprah Winfrey at four o'clock <laughs> and not let them know. Mm-hmm. And then yet I'm trying to be kicking it with the girls, yeah. but then yet I want to go practice this dance routine. Mm-hmm. So I think it would have been more of a challenge, but I didn't have to think about it like that. So it, it, it turned out positive, and you used everything, you know, that you have went through with your medical condition and mm-hmm. especially as a positive experience. Right. So, um... That's like what juicy questions. <laughs> <laughs> um... What are... Good tea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. It's nice and sweet like me. <laughs> of course, of course. And you too. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, what... Did you, <laughs> Jesse, okay. Could you um share one of your most memorable childhood experiences? Ooh, oh man! But I have so many. <laughs> like as a child growing up, oh, and the thing is, I had so many phases in my life. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I always went through a certain phase where, when I first started, it was um I was always into talk shows, mm-hmm. and I was always into Oprah Winfrey. And I used to, my mom used to see me, uh, she'll be cooking in the kitchen, you know, with her music and stuff like that. And she Not was, right, you know, the Latino <laughs> mom, but like, just what you doing? <laughs> and I know my mom. And I would have like my little stuff, animals, and open, not for nothing. I was so anal at that age, at two, where, you know, some kids like, oh, I want to watch my, like, he, he man. And yeah. like, my mom used to make, we used to go to the supermarket and, I was so into Oprah Winfrey, where 4 o'clock would hit, my mother had to make sure that by the time 3.40, she better start packing up those those groceries and get to that 16th floor of the project to let me watch that. Because if I didn't get to watch Oprah Winfrey, it would have been a wrap. So that was one phase. I started doing Oprah Winfrey. I used to have my stuffed animals, and I used to go through the back. Like, you know how Oprah used to do in the intros, mm-hmm. where, like, she'll come out and greet the audience? Yeah. So I used to do that, and my mom used to have, like, her neighbors and the projects come in, and she'd be like, oh, Jess, class, what are you cooking? You know, like, oh, Jess, what you doing? And then she'd be like, Jeff, um, glass, glass, what, what's going on with Jess? What is he going? Leave him, don't even worry about it, because he's into his own world, don't bother. And I was in my world. Like, you couldn't tell me nothing. When Oprah was on, it was like, I'm Oprah today. Oh, I'm a talk show host. And I used to have my little microphone. Remember those jump ropes? Mm-hmm. Where it was like those green jumps you buy in the 99 cent yeah. store? My mom used to duct oh, tape well. it with black. Because I was so anal that her was black. I was like, Mama, her, her microphone was black. I want it. I want it. But my mom was broke. She had no money. You know, she was on welfare and stuff like that. So she couldn't get that. Right. So that started. Right. And I started with Oprah. Then I started developing... Um, Picking up um, movie like lines from movies mm-hmm. and started to imitate them. Like Jim Carrey, I used to watch The Mask. I used to watch uh, Sister Act. Those were like my idols. I used to watch all these movies and I used to Im- imitate them. And when the family used to come, I used to they used to be like, "Oh my God, Jesse, do that, do, do, do the mask." 
And then I was like, no, 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 no. And it was like, oh, do that. And I was like, somebody stop me. And they start laughing. They will always make me do stupid stuff, mm-hmm. like imitating different things. So I had like different memorable moments in my life. But I think the most memorable one, I would have to say the one when it started, when I started to be into that kind of world, like entertaining mm-hmm. and with a microphone and everything was all about a microphone. I always had a microphone in my hand. I always was like, oh, what do you want to say, mom? I was like two years old. Didn't know gibberish, but I was like, mom, what do you want to say? Mm-hmm. And I used to always be involved in that. So at that time, my mom was like, boy, this kid is into that. Like he really loves this. Like he, my mom used to like, let me be in my own little world. Like, I'd be in the room and I used to put on a shirt and a robe and I would think it was Sister Mary Clarence, his <laughs> sister act and I would, and my mom be like, but it wasn't that kind of look where she was like, oh my God, why are my kids like that? It was more like, this kid won't stop. Like, yeah. he'll see something, and within two days, he has to imitate it. So that, that those were my memorable moments, how it started with me. So I see that, I obviously see that you, you have a passion of this, and it was very young, so you knew this is what you wanted to do. Um, is As you gotten older, this passion is it just something that comes because you know there's certain things that people do that just come within people can sing people can mm-hmm. you know but it's a, a difference when you find something that kind of identifies who you are it shows who you are as a way of expressing yourself so did this become more of your passion you know as you have your Vega 411 oh, on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> um, did this become something as a way of you being able to express yourself to, was it more of that or was it just? It was more of who I, who, who I was destined to be mm-hmm. coming into this world. Even though I wanted to be like, oh, I want to be with the guys, I wanted to be with the my cousins, that's not where my my destiny was. That's not where God put me in this world for. My God put me in this world to have a gift, and that was to entertain people. And it wasn't something as in I did it because I wanted to. I was. It was a phase, or I was wanting to prove something to people. To say like you know what yeah I like guys but you know what I just want to entertain mm-hmm. and this no it was something that I really wanted to do it was something that I loved to do because it came within and a lot of my family they used to say oh just is gonna be something in life just is just is gonna be an actor just I see it I see it I see it, I know it I know it and it became a habit where everybody knew everybody knew I was always in my family I was always the light of the house I was always the entertainer the one who would come up with like with jokes and making stupid faces and dancing and stuff like that so it became who i was and my passion and i used it as the years went by because at the time my mom always knew that i was a talented kid but she wouldn't want to be like one of those mothers like oh my god my kid is so talented oh my god i'm gonna put him on girl i'm gonna put him in all those tv shows and then just nail it on me like you know this is all you just you should do it and be one of those scary moms where what about that kid doesn't want to do that what about it was a phase Mm -hmm. so she mostly was like i want to see how far jesse really wants Mm -hmm. you know i don't want to be with those moms be like oh my god it's my kids talent i can win money you know i've seen that dollar sign you know and nowadays that's what a lot of parents do you know they don't know and now these kids who've been acting for so many years you know like Mm -hmm. raymond Mm -hmm. simone and the olsen twins and all these famous celebrities where they're not mm-hmm. either not working, they retired because mm-hmm. they don't want to do it no more. They've been doing it for so many years. Yeah. It's not within them no more. And they're so talented, but it was so pressured on them that it's like they, they lost the gift. Right. So my mom let me be. And as the years went by, the drive started to be the fuels were going up. And I was like, I really want to do this. I really want to do this. I really want to do this, mom. And she started to see that this is what I really want to do. And she, and she supports it 100%. That's excellent. And I love that because it is true. I do see a lot, a lot of situations that kids are forced mm-hmm. into, you know, they're living out what their parents want them to live out rather than what, you know, they want to live out. And I think it's excellent. That it you, is. It's because excellent. you have made it very far. You have absolutely made it very far. And um, I see, Thank you, you know, your, your shows and everything. And you are very, I see you're a huge fan 
of J-Lo. Oh, yeah, I yeah. am. <laughs> and I see that. J-Lo's my baby. I love her since I... Numerous times. And I was like, when I saw you, I'm like, oh, Jesse, look at how great you're doing. But no, I think it's excellent that you um have gotten into this and everything. And um, do you use this as a way to... You have come out. You are comfortable with yourself, mm-hmm. you know. Um, does this also help you and to, you know, like, as a child, right, you said there were times you were picked on and you were teased and you were, mm-hmm. you know, how has this impacted your life to be, to become more comfortable with who you are? If it, it has. It has. It, it, there was a, there was a big milestone in my life with that question that you asked me about how did it change? Mm-hmm. While I was in junior high school and the name teasing and pick and all that was going on, I had to find something mm-hmm. where if it wasn't with my words or if it wasn't with fists, something where I had to prove people that I'm not the faggot in the corner. Mm-hmm. I'm not a person who just hangs out with girls mm-hmm. or I'm lying that I like I don't like guys and I like girls. Mm-hmm. I had to find something to prove to people. And I, I guess it's a Capricorn thing where I felt like I was a determined person, a determined animal. I was like, I need to shut them down. I need to let them know, respect me as an individual. Not because I like this. Right. And because I hang out with a lot of girls, that means I'm gay. Right. You know? Right. So, um, because I was into entertaining and I love to pick up lines and I can recite it and things like that, I had to use that to my best potential. Right. That was that was my weapon. And how that happened was there was this um, audition mm-hmm. and it was called The Wiz. And it was in 2019 and they had it all over the walls and my friend Dinah at the time, Dinah Boltang, I hope you've seen this. <laughs> She saw it through the walls in the hallways, and she said, Jeff, Jeff, she's one of my good all time friends. Um, she knows that that's one of my biggest things I love to entertain and I love to act. And she saw talent in me. She, me and her used to watch Oprah, and she knew that I was a big Oprah fanatic. So she goes and says, Just, you know, this is audition. And she's like, You didn't know that they put in this all over the walls and I did high school? I'm like, Yeah, I know about it. And then she's like, You should do it. Just throw it at me. I was like, mm. Oh no! And it wasn't because I didn't want to do. It. I was like, I don't know. Is it how? T- like, is it legit? Is it something I want to do? Will it be time consuming? Who's gonna be involved in it? I don't want to be in a facility. It's already enough that I'm eight hours in class with all these knuckleheads, and I don't want to be going after school and dealing with it. So it depends. I was on the fest. She said, "You should do it. Do it. Do it." So I was like, "All right, I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna let's see how it is." So I went to audition, and I went into the audition room, and everybody was auditioning. And nobody didn't want to have the part for the lion. Because he's like a big comical role. So he's right. for life. You know, right. you have to be you have to go there. So nobody wanted to do that because everybody's so insecure. Right. Everybody was worried at that right. time, like, right. oh, I'm gonna look stupid right. dancing on stage. Wait, wait, we're gonna perform this in front of who? Junior high school? Oh no 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 no. Then they're gonna think of me different. Right. But I was like, oh. okay, so I went up and they was like, I'm gonna do the lion and I just came up with like Improv and then just be. My, I was myself. Never seen the movie because I did see the Wizard of Oz, but I never seen the Wiz. The Wiz okay. But I just did it with my own and just like started to be dramatic to the tenth power. And they was like, "This kid is hilarious." Like there's a lion. And from there we started doing rehearsals and rehearsals. And then as it was coming in, um, I didn't tell nobody. Mm-hmm. I didn't oh, go wow. to class. I was like, "Oh, I'm just playing." <laughs> now I'm more like promoting. Yeah, like, go watch the web. Right, I was just, right. I was like, you have to go. Watch. I was more like, no, I don't want to tell anybody because wow. if I tell anybody, they're gonna shut it down. They're gonna mm-hmm. just ruin my spirits. They're gonna think like, oh, why are you doing that? What's mm-hmm. that? So they knew I was funny, but they didn't know I was that talented right. that I could really do something and use it to my fullest potential. So I didn't tell nobody for within months. I didn't say I was in this play. I didn't say nothing. I used to go to class, deal with the nonsense, homework. And I would go to rehearsal and just do me. And then, by the time it was already opening weekend, um, I remember like it was yesterday. I wasn't like in the stage, and my my pop was gonna come on. The music was shining on, and they just opened the curtains. And um, mm-hmm. I was on the I was like this. Mm-hmm. And I was on the um, 
as a in the stage, and I was like there, ready to let the music drop. And then all of a sudden, the music drops, and I started to shaking and dancing, and the whole junior high school was going crazy because we were from the sixth graders, right. the, um, the the two seventh, the two sixth graders classes, and then the seventh grade, and eighth grade. So when the seventh grade was, the eighth grade was coming, it was a wrap. Because I was like, oh, this this is my class, like this is my grade, right. so they're gonna come, so they're gonna be like, I better blow yeah. them away. <laughs> You know, so they can know what I'm about. And when I started, the whole eighth grade went bonkers. Right. Like, you, you, I mean, you remember, like, everyone yeah. went crazy. Absolutely. So it was like, go, oh, Jess, go, oh, Jess. <laughs> so then from there, after that whole production finished, I had a lot of, like, guys come to me mm. where they were like, yo, Jess, yo, yo, you ate that shit up. Yo, you was oh. mad pop, and that shit was hot. And they started imitating what I was like. Wow. They was like, yo, I know you could act. I didn't know, yo, that was hot. And it was like a whole 360. It was a turn, a whole turn where it was like I wasn't, I was not, I was not intimidated. I was not disrespecting them more. It was like, oh no, just that nigga's gonna be an actor. He's gonna be something. And like, right. now nah, I better hang out with him. And everybody wanted to be around me throughout so that whole month. You were looked at in a whole new light. It was a whole new light. It was like that's it. I let them have it, and it was. I felt like relief. I was like, wow, like. And that's the thing, you don't need to show who you are and get respected just because you want to go into violence. Right. There's other ways to do it, Absolutely. and that was my way. Absolutely. So it definitely has had a positive effect, mm -hmm. and I think that's wonderful. Um, and I think that's the main point, you know, of everything. Like, this has, this is who you are, right. and you right. showing people who you are has changed people's perspective of you. And I think just it completely answered my question. You are absolutely expressing who you are through mm -hmm. what you do, through the entertainment and, what, and through your passion. Right. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It has changed. I see. I see. And that is great. And I think so, you know, obviously we spoken about the negative, the positive that has come as an adult. What are your experiences? you know and your with your sexuality and being you have actually when i watched you know from your clips have been to big events mm -hmm. and you know things of the sort so what it what have your experiences been like well as because i am into um my sexuality i realized growing up i was never into um uh, certain outreach events mm -hmm. and certain like big um parties or like performing being involved in the lgbt community because right. i was so like yeah i am gay yeah like guys but i don't want to be in that world mm -hmm. to just classify me as oh yeah he's gonna be in that kind of realm you right. know because i didn't start to hang out with my own mm -hmm. until i was like oof 17. Mm -hmm. so from 15 to 17 i didn't hang out with the same people that was into what i like or who went through the same thing I went through. Mm -hmm. So when I started hanging out with like, the gay people around in the community, and that's one thing about the gay community. It's big, but it's small at the same time because you go to one club and you say, oh, I know that person, I know that person. Mm -hmm. It's small. Right. You know, this, especially in the Bronx, it's mm -hmm. small. And everybody knows everybody in their mother. So I use it to my fullest potential because it's like, because I love to perform, mm -hmm. I know there was a lot of outreach events and I know that there was like drag queens performing and a lot of singers and dancers showing it as a great cause for like um, AIDS awareness and HIV and and um, show, and raising money to find the cure for either cancer right. or um, to stopping from HIV from spreading and not saying that I'm an activist or an advocate about it. I use my gift of performing and going to these events and showing a light for people like if you are infected with HIV or you are going through a situation where you're sick or your family is going through a situation, you could come see a show and just like all those doubts, all that negative energy that's going through your life every day and, and all the crap that's going on where you feel like you just want to give up life, you could come see a show and you feel like there is hope, mm -hmm. you know, there is happiness in this world. Mm -hmm. So when people come to me like, oh, you know, are you are an activist mm -hmm. where you support this? Um, yeah, I do um, support where it is important for you to um, be aware and informed about HIV and AIDS or cancer or any other type of organization. But at the same time, um, 
That's not who I am. Right. That's not somebody. That's not. I'm not a person to tell somebody you should get tested or you should right. do this. Right. And what about I? What about I'm a person that has demons in the closet mm-hmm. and I did a mistake back in 20, 40 years ago, ten years ago, and I'm here sitting now trying to tell everybody you should do this, you should do that right. because I feel like I want you to deal with the same thing I looked up with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I try to use it as. As an entertainer perspective, where I come mm-hmm. to show you love and I come mm-hmm. to entertain for your, you know, that there is a happy ending, you know, that everybody's gonna have a bad day, and we all are. Mm-hmm. But that's why I started to use it, my gift, and I started doing a lot of outreach, and I started to do it like last year. Oh, and now this was this was my second year throughout. Well, this year, no, last year was my second year, so I started doing it in. We were in 2015. Right. So I started doing it in 2013. So yeah, this will be like my third year. Mm-hmm. So when the summer comes, I'll probably do more outreach. And I started to realize it was another stepping stone for me to perform and mm-hmm. doing more bookings and doing things like that, like that nature. So that's great. It definitely, I can tell that because my next question was going to be how does, um you know, you being an entertainer and being of your sexuality impact the community? It has impacted the community because I. That's the one thing about it, about being who I am and into my sexuality. Not a lot of people, especially in the heterosexual community, realize that there's certain different types of gay. Mm-hmm. There's certain different types of lesbian. But sometimes they say, oh, you're gay. Oh, so you're just a pajara. You're just, you know, you're all of this, you're all of that, giving mm-hmm. life. No, there's some gays that are in the closet. There's mm-hmm. some gays that are more uh, reserved mm-hmm. um, and conservative. There's some gays that are very loud and boisterous. Mm-hmm. And then there's some that just don't believe in labels where they just like to mess around with the same sex. Mm-hmm. And then um, some of them either have heterosexual relationships when they have a wife and kids and they just like that mm-hmm. fetish, you know? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people say, oh, you're gay, so that means you're a flaming queen. Oh, you're lesbian, that means you dress up as a boy. No, there's certain different categories, you know, not everything's the same. So with me, I used it as, and I impacted the community where, yeah, I am gay, but at the same time, I'm going to be respected as an individual. Mm -hmm. I'm not just because I'm gay, I'm, um, you know, a flaming queen where everything's a joke and everything's uh, fun and games and we live in La La Land and um, it's not good to... Um, be negative and mm-hmm. I was never into that I was I'm I'm have different phases in my life different personalities where and this and if I'm in this community and I'm in this type of like um, area in my life where I can act this certain way and then when I'm going to interview I'm this certain way mm-hmm. so just because we're that doesn't mean that we're what everybody classified right, as absolutely so I impacted the community because they get to see that. They get to see, oh, you know, he's not just because he is. And so, guys, doesn't mean that he is, like, very loud and right. boisterous. And I am that. You know, I am energetic. I am yeah. loving. I'm, well, everything's a joke. And I love to act like that. But there's a certain place and time for everything. And I had to learn that within coming myself as I was getting older. Because in the beginning, I was more, there was a phase where I was like, oh, everything's all grown man, it's grown man. And everything's a yeah. joke, everything's a joke. Yeah. And then people don't take you serious. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I don't want to deal with you. Absolutely. No, not deal with you. So I've learned how to just let people know that you can be this at this time, celebrate, and then after that, you can do this. Do that. But no, people, a lot of people don't think of it like that. They right. think of it as like, oh, I'm this, and I don't care what you say, mm-hmm. but I'm not changing for nobody. And I you can still act like that, but a more positive mm-hmm. note. I completely agree. I completely agree. Mm -hmm. Because I think just in any sexuality, any, whether it be a race or anything, people are that way. This is me. I'm not changing for anyone. And whether you like it or not, and I completely agree that this is who you are and you should be you anywhere you go. However, there is a time and a place for things. Right. It's not like if you say, oh, um... I'm Puerto Rican, so I'm gonna go into like this office. I'm like, yo, bitch, yeah, what's up? Like, right. And they be like, exactly. Carly, yeah, okay, we are that, but we don't right. need to showcase that. Right. You know, there's right. a certain person talking about we're in our family, we got crazy, I'm mm-hmm. loud. Mm-hmm. You know, or if you're African American, doesn't mean like, oh, you know, I have to be mad ratchet mm-hmm. in the hood and start twerking and things like that. Like, Absolutely. there's a certain place and time for everything. Yeah. And, you know, just because we're that doesn't mean that, oh, we're that. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're also we like Goyo. You know, <laughs> but okay. I like Kool Aid, and I can just like yeah. it's it's stereotypical, and that's we're more than that, you know. 
So I definitely see, um, you know, going off of mm-hmm. that, that it has impacted your life tremendously. And also, like, I do see you being a big part of the community because you are getting involved. You are getting involved in your booking things and your speaking, even if you're not, I don't want to say you're not an advocate for it because you are, mm-hmm. but you're not trying to bash this into people. You're just trying to, I, I see the biggest impact for you is obviously you, you want to make these people happy. You want to, as you stated, show them that there is something more positive to look forward to. Right. right. And I think that is, that's wonderful. Yeah. That is absolutely wonderful. And you have been a great advocate for people, even if you haven't seen it. And I'm sure um, too many you have been a great influence. Thank you so much. In which you may not even realize. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Martha. I appreciate that. I didn't think I was. I was like, because everybody sees me, and I'm like, and that's one thing, one of my, I used to always feel, I'm like, I'll tell my boyfriend this, I'm like, but I don't feel like I've, I, I have fans. I don't feel like I have a, a base or, or a platform for myself. Because I feel like, yeah, they see me on Facebook. Yeah, they come to the events. But I don't feel like there's like somebody's tagging along with like, oh yeah, I'm I'm for him. You know, I really like him. I want to watch his video. I always think of it as oh, it's a flying by because mm-hmm. I don't see it. But like my boyfriend always tells me, he's like, you don't see it, but you don't realize you do have fans because there are people watching. Absolutely. You know, you just not seeing it. You know, you don't need it to be like, oh, I'm in your face and I'm a biggest right. fan of you. You know, no. So I'm like, oh, I used to feel like. Am I not showing this? Am I like, yeah. am I not proving something to people? Do do I really matter in mm-hmm. people's lives? And you do, you do matter in people's Absolutely. lives. You don't realize it, but you don't need to see it. But there is people following because once you start yeah. realizing it, they start to come out mm-hmm. in the womb. Mm-hmm. And they realize it, or even people, it's like haters. You know, somebody was like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't have haters, and then you'd be surprised how many people I have had haters because yeah, no. you might put something on your status and you might say. I got a job. Mm-hmm. This is how the community is in life, you know, yeah. and I didn't just homosexuality, but in general. in general, where you might put, oh, I got a job, I got an apartment. How many likes you see? Like two. Like two. <laughs> and then you say, yo, I'm about to fuck this bitch. I'm, I'm tired of like that. You see Ed, a million, a million, like, what's <laughs> going on, girl? What happened? You're crying. I got your bag. Right, I thought you might go to the studio. You want to hook up a club? We could get, Absolutely. and you're like, really? Mm-hmm. But, you didn't say congratulations that I just mm-hmm. booked this job mm-hmm. or I um, got a, a, an apartment mm-hmm. or I graduated because I don't want to hear that because their lives are miserable. Right. So there's mm-hmm. like, if my life is miserable, why am I going to give a congratulations to somebody which it's not, they ain't give me nothing. Right. Everybody's selfish. Why should I be happy for them? Exactly. I completely agree. Completely agree. And um, no, and I, I do, I do believe that even if you don't see it, and you don't, there may not be a many people in your face, like, chasing you down the block. Right. I'm sure. <laughs> and I'll be nice. It's kind of crazy. It's a little bit hectic. It's not, it's not fun and games. Yeah. It gets bad. But, yeah. But, yeah. but you definitely, I, I know that there are people that, even myself, like, I would look like, oh, I'm so proud of him. Like, he came so far. But then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing this. Right. And then I'm like, oh, he's doing think it's wonderful and you know you should definitely keep people up there on the events and everything yes because I definitely support you all thank you so much Mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of things coming up there's a lot of things that I'm working on that I'm coming up where people can come see me and shed a light to show a lot of entertainment for a lot of people get out the house yeah absolutely Absolutely. do something positive go to the positive event yeah I got to go to the events they can go and um do a lot of this. I'm always promoting on my sites and my Facebook, and um, not only doing like the online show for one and films. There's a lot of different things that I'm working on, which I just like wrapped up a web series. Did you? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I wrapped up a web series like a couple of like a month ago called How to Make It Big, oh. and nice. it's basically about um, a group of wacky individuals audition for like this musical called Girl the Musical, and they all have to work together with their individual talents to bring that musical to life to Broadway. So that's that's what I was working on, which is going to come on the summer. Exactly Went to the film festivals and working with, uh, doing a lot of other uh, inspirational cover videos, the most of music videos. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things happening. And also doing a lot of outreach. 
we're going back into June. Mm-hmm. It's gonna still get hot. Absolutely. So you can always catch me out in like Monty if I'm doing Monty or anywhere in the Bronx. So mm-hmm. You can always check me out. Definitely, definitely. Would you like to share any final words? Or well, I would like to say thank you, Martha. It's been so long. We haven't really know, seen each other. We need to really get with each other more and hang out. This is really beautiful. I didn't mm-hmm. think, you know, even though we haven't seen each other for so many years, yeah. we finally got to really reminisce and talk about the good old days and back in high, junior high school and. We get to become full circle, so this is beautiful, and we should stay in touch. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I'm I so happy. I am. I'm happy too. I'm happy. And um, I guess last word would be, um, I guess you could like, so if you want to know more about me, they can promote me on my site, which is yeah. facebook.com slash jbega90 and facebook.com slash bega411, and then also YouTube that's um, dot com slash Bronx. So there's a lot of different things out there that we can do. Definitely. So I look know. We should take a selfie before we say goodbye. <laughs> we chime in. We get my phone. <laughs> Let's do selfies. Hold on. Wait, we gotta do selfies. This is a big moment on the on the screen. <laughs> come on, come on. Recording, recording. I know. We let it record. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, ready? Let's do one more. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. And again, this is Jesse Baker. He's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.